Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news, trends, and innovations from thought leaders like my buddy Mark Gusikoff over here in the in the world of digital uh, infrastructure. We are also live. We are coming at you live from PTC 2025. So you behave yourself. That's right. PTC 2025 in beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. And as I said. This is my friend, Mark Gusikoff. Mark is the Chief Certification Officer for the IDCA and Advisory Board member of the Nomad Futurists. Did I get it all? I think so, pretty oh. much. I mean, we are more than friends, but I'll accept friends for right now. <laughs> yeah. This is my husband. No. Oh, this is, this is my, my this is my good friend. My work good husband. Friend. Work husband. My work. Yeah. My, we do have like oh, yeah, people, almost people twins. Have, people almost have called twins. us worse. Um, anyway, so Mark, um, how is the IDCA certification program adopting to meet the requirements or the changing requirements? It's a it's a heavy one. This the changing awesome. requirements of the global data of global data centers. There's nothing bigger right now. We. Uh, oh my. God, I mean, just just the enormous stretch to be able to keep up with, you know, what's going on with AI. I mean, yeah, that's the buzzword and everything. But the new buzzword out there that we're seeing and that we're talking about globally mm -hmm. is the global digital economy. What are countries doing at their level to scale? How are they building digital pods, digital nodes, you know, hubs, so that we're able to maintain a layer of resiliency that nobody else is certifying standards to? We're creating that global standardization at the country level. It's not just about individual sites anymore, individual deployments, one here, one there, even having a digital twin. It's really about <laughs> digital twins. It's the first oh, time yeah. someone has said digital oh. twinning today. Um, Did they really? This is, no, this no, is like this is, talking this, about this? this. No, this is the first time someone has said it today. You? Oh, uh, come on. Nope. Promise. Well, Promise. Digital, digital twin and human twin. Yeah, right. Yeah, wonder twin powers <laughs> activate. So as we start to look at countries and what their needs are, we have people coming to us from all over the world saying, we really want to be that highest echelon of excellence. Yeah. And our Infinity Paradigm certification does that to be able to work with countries, work with data centers, work with service providers to bring all those components together from the country level to the site level to the component level through SDS certification, system design yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. service. Mm -hmm. And then the human being, which we can never forget about the workforce deficit that we're having and how are we going to certify the people at that yeah. level as well. Mark, um, only because that was a heavy question and there, there was a lot to consume in what you man. had yeah, and what, and what you just said, I think it actually warrants a little bit of context. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about the um, IDCA, uh, the, the mission there? Absolutely. International Data Center Authority was founded uh, by Mehdi Paryavi. Mm -hmm. uh, we just celebrated our 14 year anniversary and we are the global standardization authority in the world for creating certified entities within the space for mission critical digital infrastructure yeah. excellence to support the global digital economy. I know that's a mouthful and I really it, have it is, but that's, that's that the is, context. That's that the context the around the answer to that previous question. Yeah. We are the only entity that I'm aware of. And I think I can pray this, say mm -hmm. this with a pretty high degree of confidence. We're the only entity that I've ever seen that actually came out with a state of the digital economy report at a global scale. Mm -hmm. So we look at countries and how they're actually established within the hierarchy. Check it out. And if you don't find one <laughs> online, you can email me and I'll send you one. But we are able to take that report and look at how countries are stacked up against each other mm -hmm. in a very detailed approach. So it would actually shock you that, you know, the United States is ranked somewhere down in the 40s. So when you look at these, it takes into account a lot of situations that people may not be considering and how to achieve operational standards and excellence. That is, that is interesting. Um, and it, it wouldn't, it would shock me if I didn't know a little bit about the industry. And frankly, if I weren't at this event, uh, this uh, is, because, yeah, because this it is truly kind of shows that, that wide swath of what's happening globally versus what might be happening in your region of the world. Yep. But um, let's talk a little bit about the challenges that folks face in obtaining some certifications? Because I know that you are intimately involved in, in helping with that process. Yep. So some of the challenges around certification we see are, you know, typically they'll say, well, the hyperscalers aren't telling us to do it. We're, we're not going to spend a dime on this. 
how are we keeping them honest? I yeah. mean, how are we really yeah. keeping a structure built so that when people want to be able to sustain either an economy or sustain an environment, what are the processes that we're doing so that everybody's operating with the same playbook? Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. critical. And if everybody's running, you know, it's, this isn't the Wild West anymore. It really is. I mean, yeah. AI is starting to get some standardization behind it. We Started. have a long yeah. way to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have a long way to go. But as we start to standardize it, I think uh, our twin, Bill Clayman, well, more <laughs> yours than mine, but put a cowboy hat on. He, he brings it. He brings it. Yeah. But he always talks about, you know, it's not just about the GPU anymore. And Ken Moriano does this yeah. with their, their affiliations with Scott. But as they start talking about this, it's not just about the GPU. Now it's GPU as a service. We were talking about this when we were talking it's about wild. So yeah. the whole thing is starting to emerge. We've got to keep up with it, Dean. It's not that we're behind the curve, but we're getting there. But we got to keep up with it. And the only way we're going to do that is self-regulation within the industry. Mm -hmm. That's what we do before someone else regulates us for us in a way that yeah. we're not going to like. Or in a way that stifles innovation. Uh, okay. Nuclear. I mean, what we're seeing Thank in you. nuclear, yeah. like we mm -hmm. can't, we can't get ahead. I mean, I have been so lucky to work with Brian Smith, Department of Energy, who just made a transition to Idaho National Laboratories. And what Brian's doing is taking a very, very discreet interest in our industry. Mm -hmm. I've been really blessed to work with them. We're doing fireside chats all over the place. But Idaho National Labs has taken an interest in our industry to say, we want to be excellent as well. Yeah. We want to achieve that standard. And they've asked me to come in and sit in and tour their facilities. And a bunch of people from the industry came in and did it as well. We've been very blessed that they want to also meet that standard yeah. and they want to be excellent but they want to learn from us as well and they yeah. want to contribute to our industry this is important so um i kind of going to go off script here the, the speed of innovation yep uh has got to have has got to play a major challenge um in in your ability to uh to create a kind of a standards based uh you know a, a standards based organization something where everyone can say we're all on board Yep. And then innovation changer or a technology changes yep. and people are like, uh, how do we get on board with this? Yep. Is it, talk to us about that. Yeah. Imagine, you know, gone are the days of, oh, we're going to certify our facility to, you know, one of the standards that's out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Really only focus on only one layer of efficacy, sometimes two. And even when they focus on two, they're very disparate. They're yeah. disjointed. We focus on seven layers of efficacy. We look at things like innovation. We look at sustainability. We look at operational resiliency. We don't just look at one thing. But we look at how they all come together in ecosystem. Right now, in process, we're working with four of the largest chip manufacturers to certify them in the industry. They've realized that, I think that's a great place uh, to start, right? Oh, how is it not? Yeah. And when I was in, you know, when I first got started in this game and I was in the, the certification piece, I never thought I'd be certifying chip manufacturers. Yeah, I no. really didn't think it was yeah. going to evolve into this. But how quick did it happen? I mean, in two years, look at where we've come and how far we've gone. That's what we're doing at IDCA. It, it's so crazy. And so just to like put the put the, the rubber right smack dab on the road, um, working with the client to be, uh, never to be named um, right now, but, um, but um, they are... The uh, the supply chain issue uh, on on the chip side, yep. getting from across the country. By the time it gets to one place, it is no longer it, it is no longer uh, um, relevant. It has to be reflashed. It has to be do all. Of, so I imagine some of the work that you're doing probably has to do with making sure that we have this standards based way of doing this, Absolutely. so that things are not irrelevant before they're actually ever thrown in the the data hall. When we assess one of the components that we really do take a good long look at, it's one of the longest parts of our process is what's your time to deploy? What's your time to manufacture? Yeah. Where are you manufacturing? Hearing How are you manufacturing? That, yeah. Are you doing everything in-house? What are you outsourcing? So we look at all of these components when we put everything together and we can help and work with people as well. So within our network, we also have other resources that yeah. are certified entities that we can put together and we can help bridge those gaps. Now it's not just, oh yeah, I'm certifying somebody and walking away. Now it's, well, we're using certified entities in this country and this is who we're going to standardize on yeah. and we're working to bring that through it's incredible it's so much fun yeah i mean it's just it's a, so much fun oh huh? it's fun wow you know me i don't my, my have a good time my, sure. like, my, 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 my friend mark is even more dorkier than i thought <laughs> oh you know you knew this all along <laughs> yeah. you knew this all along. yeah no that that's great uh you're doing the good work man thank you trying hard trying hard and one last, one last yeah, thing. Please. Always, always a fantastic plug. Um, Want to just talk about Nomad Futures? Yeah, yeah, quick. do we it. Just do it. it. We just had Nabil and Philip here. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
we're, you know, we're doing more in the event space. We're growing our ambassadorship. Um, we're advertising advocacy now. So mm-hmm. originally we had ambassadors and advisors. Yeah. Now we also have advocates in the group. So we're growing. Our numbers are incredible. Yeah. But we're also starting to work on really good resources of funding. I am super blessed to be working with, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name drop just Do for it. a because I love the guy. Do it. Um, doesn't look anything like us. But Brian Jabeck and I are working in the community engagement side of Nomad Futurist to really start driving fundraising and do as much as we can for local communities like Columbus, Ohio. That's a a big focus for us. And Atlanta, Georgia, where we're starting to see emerging places. So when we can get some resources together and we fundraise, the money goes back to that area of the community so that we can get young people computers. We can get them, you know, some exposure. We can also help trying to support some scholarships and give some money back to the business, back to emerging talent. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. The collaboration is such a uh, breath of fresh air between the the Nomad Futurists, the iMasons, um, and and your organizations. Um, I, again, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Uh, it is always it is always so great to see you, Mark. It's always great to see you. I am so happy that I get to do this with you. Yeah, and I too. can't wait to do some of the other things that we're uh, we were talking about. Lots, well the, lots uh, of things, lots of things on the horizon, the buddy. Podcast. I yeah. love it. Me too. Me too. Right. And thank you viewers for watching JSA TV. Uh, we will, uh, well, I, well, I want you to stay healthy and happy and I want you to stay curious into the industry and connected. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>